Greetings, fellow descendants. My name's Lars. Today we're gonna go over the week eight preseason challenge breakdown. So unfortunately, last week we got 59 supply coins from all the missions. This week we're only getting 51. Last week we had two tens, three eights, three fives for the supply coins. This week we have one ten, one eight, and six fives. So we lost out on an eight and a ten, meaning we lost out on eight coins total. So what we have instead is 51 instead of 59 coins. Uh, it is still better than what we were getting before, but it does, it is a loss still. I was hoping that maybe this, these could be avoided for some because some of these are just a lot. 200,000 kills and 300 intercept battles, 200 amorphous materials open. Like, I mean, it's doable, but you have to put in so much time to do it and not everybody has that time, and it's unfortunate to be able to miss out on, like, these extra bonuses from the shop because of that. But hopefully in Season 1, they'll change this around a little bit. I don't necessarily think it's going to change much, but we'll just have to wait and see. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the Week 8 challenges real quick, and I'm going to show you where to get these done in a pretty quick and easy manner. Um... Except for one of them, which there's no quick and easy way to do it. You just gotta you just gotta be there and you gotta do it. But we'll get into that. So uh yeah, let's get into the challenges. Okay, so let's start off with the sharpened blade challenge. Deal five hundred thousand damage or higher at once. So this one is doable in a couple of different ways. If you have a big burst oriented descendant like Blair with truly deadly cuisine. Um, you know, Bunny's got some pretty high damage output with the high voltage. The Ultimate Bunny with the high voltage could probably do this as well. I think SMO fully stacked can do a big chunk of damage. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different big damaging descendant options. Like, for instance, Lepic. Lepic's ultimate can do a lot of damage. So can Kyle using his Iron Man uh, drop. So you could do any of those, really, just hit something really hard. If you don't have any of these characters unlocked, or you don't have anything really well built to do that, it's perfectly fine. Grab your strongest sniper rifle that you can, slot in as much extra firearm attack and crit damage mods that you can get into that thing. Go to the lowest level Kingston area. Just go to a Kingston area on normal difficulty. And then just shoot something in a weak spot. Just find a patrol, shoot it in the head. And if that doesn't get you there, uh, Sharon, you can stealth and do the same thing. And you should get an, uh, an enhanced bonus from her ambush, passive, ambush and passive and stuff from coming out of stealth. That should get you enough. Like here, you can see I do like 1.9 mil damage just from shooting this thing. And then I follow up just with a normal shot to the one of the smaller enemies and get 700,000. So just bring your strongest sniper rifle, highest level sniper rifle that you can. If you need to go farm one, uh, there's a bunch of different ones you can farm. Purple ones. I just grabbed any random purple one I had and just did it. You don't need you don't need afterglow sniper, uh, afterglow sword or any of that. Just any purple sniper level 100 with some extra firearm attack should do it. Uh, moving on, but still kind of keeping in the same vein, we're gonna do electrifying excitement. Defeat five or more enemies with bunny skills three times. So if you already have an ultimate bunny or bunny and you're just really well built on it, just go do any mission, blow up a bunch of enemies, you're fine. Just make sure you're doing a mission that has enough spawned enemies to get this active. Uh, but if you don't have all that going, you haven't really leveled bunny, you haven't really done much, you just maybe leveled it, and just have not committed to it like I have. Just get a reactor that's purple, that's activatable, and go and find a low-level Kingston mission, like this one here in the Grand Square. You can do the Volgus Data Transmitter mission, and all you gotta do for that, just start the mission, let the enemies kind of come to you, and then use your first ability once about five of them are on top of you. And just do that three times, you should be able to take out all of them instantly on normal mode if you're, hard, if you're higher level. If you're just starting out, uh, you may not be able to, but you might. I don't know exactly how. So just blow them up three times, get this mission done, reset if you need, reset the mission if you need to, just to get it done and 
That's really all it is. Just, but if you already have a well-built bunny, this one's easy. Just find a mission where you are dealing with at least five or more enemies spawning at a time so that when you do run past them, uh, and plenty of missions do that. So you could go do anything really and get that done. It's not a big deal if you already well-built. Okay, so, so that's your weak point. Defeat enemies by targeting their weak points. You can, again, do any mission for this. Uh, the easiest way to go about this was is with humanoid enemies, I would feel. They're kind of on your base, like, line of sight height level. So you can kind of just shoot them with a machine gun, and it's, it's fine. Avoid missions where you've got a lot of big enemies, where you have to shoot up, and you have to constantly be adjusting your height for that. Um, and you need to use something that can hit weak points. So a, gun, uh, a firearm is going to be better. Take a machine gun with you, make sure you're doing it with, make sure you're not utilizing Thunder Cage, though. Thunder Cage, I don't know if it will accurately, if the explosion will accurately do the weak point for the other enemies. So you might not get as much progress that way. But the mission I did that I had the easiest time with is in Sterile Land at the classified area, do the large nuclear reactor mission. Lots of enemies coming at you. You're just standing in a circle, turning, facing the enemies. They're mostly all, they're all humanoid types. Uh, and you, they're pretty easy to shoot down. Just do this mission a couple times uh, by yourself and just shoot as many enemies in the in the weak point as you can. For these humanoid types, it's their heads, so just keep doing that, and you should get that one done quick and easy. It only requires 100, so it's not going to take you that long. Like I said, maybe about four runs of this should get you there, and that'll be that. Here's a challenge I found actually pretty fun, more engaging, now, this one isn't necessarily the best because it is going to require a little bit of setup, but at least it's more interesting of a mission than just kill 5,000 enemies with a hand cannon or something. So the real challenge is clear a mission with the Descendant module overwhelming defense equipped on hard difficulty, excluding outposts, void fragments, and fusion reactors. So whenever I have to do something like this, just clear a hard difficulty one, we go to... Rockfall in Sterile Land, we do the Anticipated Ambush Point. It's a fast, easy mission, no problem. But the problem, thing with this one is Overwhelming Defense is a module which fixes your HP at 1, so you can only have 1 HP, and then it gives you increased defense. So for this, we're actually going to need to build some shield. So I went ahead and grabbed Enzo, and I equipped him with all the shield modifier boosting mods I had that I could fit. And then I went and did the mission. I had about 2,000 shield, thanks to a couple of external components being able to equip to boost my shield value. Uh, if you don't have any external components that have shield value on, you can go farm a couple real quick. Just check your the weekly reward stuff when you're on your map. Look at the bottom, look for the weekly rewards layout and find the processor, memory, auxiliary, whatever it is for the week. And just find the areas and go farm a couple max shield just so that you can have enough alternatively if you are just have a really strong character that you can just try and kamikaze your way through just run through and blow up everything before it even has a chance to look at you you can do that too so you know ultimate bunny just run through blow up the whole mission that's fine too otherwise just equip yourself with as much shield stuff as you can grab a character like enzo if you've got him so you can replenish your shield with his third ability and just go do the mission just burn the enemies down as you see them and get yourself to the final elite, take him down. Anytime your shield gets damaged, replenish it with his third ability and you're good to go. I like this challenge better than some of the other ones we've gotten just because it does present us with something to think about and to like build towards, even though it does, it is limiting us uh, in, our, in what we can do because we have to build for shield and our HP is low. It's still a little bit more interesting than some of the other ones we've gotten, which is just, we'll have to see how they go for season one with a lot of these challenges. Okay, so up next, you got ultimate strategy, complete the infiltrate the quarantine zone operation in the fortress on hard difficulty. Okay, so this one confused me for a second at first because of the way it's worded, but what it's saying is it wants you to do the infiltration operation for quarantine zone, which is a dungeon. So you just go over here to the terminal and you find your, you go to the fortress area and on hard mode and you go ahead and click on the quarantine zone dungeon and just do that. This one's pretty easy. There's not any crazy missions that will slow you down or make this run take forever. 
just kind of burn your way through, defeat all the enemies. You can do this in public or private, depending on what you want to do. If you just want to clear it, do it in public, see if any other people will join. And once you're at the end and you're fighting the boss, all he really does is call down some ice beams at you. He'll shoot at you with his, with his minigun, and he'll throw hockey pucks at you. Line of sight the hockey pucks, dodge the space lasers, and just avoid getting hit too much by his gun and you will be fine. The overall, it's not a hard one, it's not a long one, you can do this pretty quickly. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so last up we have three intercept focused challenges. We're going to start with the easier one. Blitz one, complete any intercept battle within one minute. You can do this on normal, you can do this on hard, whatever you want to do. I, my suggestion, just load up Gravewalker the very first intercept battle. You can do this in like 10 seconds. Even if you are uh, still working your way through normal mode, this thing is low level. It's got very low stats. You can probably burn it in under 30 seconds, no matter what stage of the game you're at. Unless you were brand spanking new and you just unlocked this fight, you should be able to burn it down within a minute easy. So just do that two times and boom, five coins for you. Next up is I Shall Be Too Late. Clear any hard intercept battle within five minutes, one time. So Devour is the go-to whenever I think I need to clear anything fast. If you are not strong enough to do hard mode intercept battles consistently and quickly, then I don't really have a good recommendation for you. I mean, Devour healing is probably going to make the fight go too long if you aren't consistently and quickly beating these fights and without investing into a lot for your character i don't know if you can beat it within five minutes for most of them but i would say devour is the best bet for just in any given situation he's gonna die the fastest of them all so if you're struggling with hard mode intercept battles i don't know if this one will be doable for you nor do i feel like the next one will be either but just give it your best try and see if you can do it if you do need to get this one done and you are struggling with hard mode intercept battles try and ask in world chat or try and ask in the official discord or anywhere see if anybody was willing to help out you can try and ask and see if someone will help the first three bosses are pretty easy to do a lot of people would probably be willing to help so if you can't do this one on your own go ahead and ask for some assistance and see if anyone's willing to help and that's the best thing best advice i can give for this one okay so last one is Resistance of the Fallen Tyrant, Defeat Molten Fortress in Intercept Battle Hard. So if you've been struggling with hard mode intercept battles, you are not at Molten Fortress yet. Because you've probably been stopped by the first three, maybe Pyromaniac, maybe Swamp Walker, maybe Frostwalker. Um, Molten Fortress is not a hard fight. It just requires cooperation and cooperation with random people sometimes just is very difficult. The fight itself is very straightforward and easy though, so I'll go ahead and talk through it for anyone who's maybe on this fight and is having a little bit of trouble. We'll just talk through it real quick. But if your teammates load in and decide they don't want to play the game and decide to leave, you just got to keep going until you find a group. The fight's pretty straightforward. You load in as long as everyone stays in the group. Just shoot at the weak points. He's got like a dome above his head that houses a weak point, just shoot off the dome, and then the weak point will be exposed. Very similar to Swamp Walker or any of the walkers where you shoot their eyeball in the, in the center. It, it has a casing covering it. Once you break that, the eyeball is exposed. You can damage that until it's uh, until you can grapple onto it. Same thing with this. You can also shoot him in the, the upper and lower parts of his head. So his, he his uh, forehead and his jaw, both weak points you can shoot at as well as a bunch of nodes along his shell lining that you can shoot for weak points. Just do damage to him until he enters his immunity phase, dodge any fireballs, flame breath, or fire towers that he uses against you, as well as avoid too much junk going on underneath him where he's spewing fire out from underneath, and just get to the immunity phase. Once he's in the immunity phase, he's going to be invulnerable in the center. You cannot approach him or do anything to him. The only thing you can do is interact with the towers that he spawns. So the general idea for this is everyone in your group split up and try and cover at least two towers. Uh, once you completed yours, try and help out nearby players with theirs. But the goal is you have to shoot 
the little boxes on the towers. They're white when you when you see them. After you shoot them, they'll turn red. And there's a little arrow uh, with that's following the positions. There's eight positions on each box, and wherever the arrow is pointing, uh, that's where it currently is. It will move in a counterclockwise fashion, so you will need to shoot it a number of times in some cases to get it to where you want it. But the goal is to point every single one of these to the right. If you point every one of them to the right, if everyone follows this, and you get all of them done, which if everyone gets going quickly, you can do very quickly uh, before anything happens. Uh, once the whole grid is set up, all the towers are connected, the boss will become vulnerable again, uh, and you can go back to fighting him and probably take him down shortly after. If, however, you do not get it done quickly enough, the boss is shooting, like, fire um, meteors out of his back at all of the towers. You can shoot these out of the air, and you can even shoot them right off the top with something very explosive that can hit multiple things, like a rocket launcher. And you can blow them up and prevent them from hitting the towers, but if they hit the towers too many times, you see there's a bar that's ticking up charges on it. The second that gets maxed out, the tower gets reset. It does, it's not activatable for a couple seconds, and you have to redo that tower entirely. And it'll spawn sometimes in a very poor position, like very, like one off of the right, but you have to go all the way around and whatnot. So if you do it quickly, you can avoid this, but if somebody struggles, then it's not great. So if you're doing this mission and you see, and you complete yours and you see that someone's still struggling through theirs, just try and shoot the orbs out of the air as best you can give them a chance to get their thing in position. And if if it fails, you can leave and join another group and try again. Unfortunately for this fight, it's really coordination and team focused. And if your team just isn't doing the proper stuff, then you will just have to wait and try again. If you're not at that point for hard mud fights, I wouldn't worry about this mission. It's only five coins as well, so if you've done a lot of other things and if you've gotten enough of your uh, things you want out of the supply coin shop, Unless you're, like, just that one sliver away from getting that last final thing, I wouldn't worry about this one. It's only worth five. There's other missions you could probably do to get that last bit that you need. Unless you're trying to get everything, and the only things you have left are the just the season challenges themselves. Those are longer, those are harder, but that's, uh, that's pretty much it for week eight. Okay, so that's it for the week eight challenge breakdown. It's the, the challenges this preseason have been rough. I know that not uh, everyone has been able to get all of theirs done because there's just too much of a time commitment for some things, and I understand that. It's it's rough. And I really hope that Season 1 offers more interesting and engaging missions rather than just droll, like, time-consuming missions of just, you know, defeat, you know, 150 million enemies or reach mastery rank 79, or, you know, complete every mission once on both normal and hard difficulty or something. But we're just going to have to wait and see, and I just hope that if they are going to keep these extremely time-consuming, the that the supply coin rewards aren't so insanely um, amazing that everyone feels like they're missing out from not being able to get their stuff done, you know? Um, so I will... This will probably be the last video I upload until Season 1 starts. Um, we're only about, we're only like five days away from the season, but I'm going to wait until it drops before I do another one. We're going to be doing, uh, I'll do the preseason challenges and weeks and week one together. I'll do the season one season challenges and the week one challenges in one video, uh, on the weekend following the release of season one, as well as we'll go ahead and do videos for Haley. We'll do them for the new infiltration stuff as well as any other new changes that come with Season 1 as a whole. So if you're looking forward to that, please like and subscribe for more TFD content. I will get to that uh, once we get the new Season stuff started. And uh, if you have any comments or questions regarding anything, just go ahead and leave them down in the comments below, and I will respond to them as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Season 1, trying out Haley, seeing what this new infiltration stuff has to offer. But uh, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.